Hey guys, welcome back to another one. This is Crypto Elite. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been on a very exciting rise right now. As you can see, it's at $27,500, which is a lot. It's up 10% in the past 24 hours, and it's beating a lot of altcoins right now, which is very surprising. We'll talk about why that's happening. Also, some exciting news from Fidelity and also some pushback from Coinbase to the SEC. So before we get to all those three stories, let's check out the overall portfolio. As you know, it's been a little bit of time since I've made my most recent video and here it is right now. As you know, my overall portfolio, every single video, I give updates on when I buy, when I sell and how it looks. And as you can see right now, it's at 23,177. If I zoom out to my overall portfolio uh, throughout the entire lifespan, this is actually the highest value my portfolio has been, which is super exciting. It's pros and cons with that. As you know, you hear me in every single video, I'm trying to get one full BTC, and the higher Bitcoin goes, the harder it is to average in into that one full Bitcoin. Right now, I'm almost at 0.6 BTC, I'm at 0.57, so slowly but surely getting there. I also have three Ethereum, and I'm actually going to pull off one Ethereum from Coinbase very, very soon. I look forward to that. And I switched over my USDC. I used to have Circle. Now I have USDT. And that's just because of what happened over the past couple days and weeks. And now with the second story, we'll talk about that here soon. I actually might switch my USDT back into USDC. And that's only because USDC has more proof of reserves. Tether, unfortunately, it doesn't have the proof of reserves, but it, it wasn't locked away in a bank and it was still pegged at one dollar so that's why i did switch everything over to usdt and as you see in my next video i may swap it back over to usdc i also have cardano it's my biggest loser right now down at about 70 percent but it's a hold we'll wait till the next bull cycle see what happens but i do know cardano is a little bit slower of a development for a crypto that needs to remain in the top 10 or 20 wherever it is and so we'll see what those developments if they continue to push but they do have that community that continues to drive the the narrative for Cardano forward. I also have the near protocol, which is still slightly down a little bit, down about five six percent. And I think, like I said, this is a fast green uh, crypto, which in the near future will be very very important, especially in the EU. I have optimism. There's a lot of excitement behind optimism right now, especially with Coinbase creating their own layer two on top of optimism, and the most recent crypto purchase I did was RIO, Rilio Network. And this is something I'll talk about more in probably a future video, but it's a upcoming narrative that I think is actually going to be very applicable, and that's RWA. And if you're unfamiliar with that, it is real world assets. So right now it's down a little bit. It is very, very volatile. So it jumps down quite a bit and it also spikes up quite a bit as well. But we'll hold on. Uh, tight. It, just like my optimism, I only put in $100 and between all of the fees of moving uh, $100 worth of USDC or USDT and getting it into the Relio network using Uniswap, it took quite a bit of fees. So I think my overall purchase price was $85 even though I started with 100 with all the fees and whatnot. So that is where my overall portfolio is. Sorry, that was a little bit longer than usual, but it has been a while. So let's Let's dig into that news. The first one has to do with Fidelity. They are officially now offering Bitcoin trading for its customers, which is very exciting. So this is something that came out in November of 2022, but it was only for a select uh, user base. Now it's for everyone who ever wants to buy Bitcoin. You can go ahead and get some on Fidelity. And there's some perks with it, which we'll talk about here in a second. The downside, you will not be able to transfer your money into cold storage or your Bitcoin into cold storage. And that is the key feature to cryptocurrency right now. You don't want to keep it on exchange. Even though Fidelity is one of the top tier platforms out there, I do not recommend anyone keeping any of their cryptocurrency on any exchange or any top tier, whether it be Fidelity, Charles Schwab, Vanguard, any of those. So uh, they did say that withdrawing funds in the future is something that probably will happen, but for now it's not something that's available. So that is a downside to me. On the bright side, there is no fee. So you can purchase your Bitcoin without having to worry about any 
trading fees. And as you know, right now, some of the trading fees are ridiculous on those centralized exchanges. So that is a good thing. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. The next thing I want to talk about is why Bitcoin is exploding. And it all has to do with these banks. As you can see, I love this picture. The glass is broken because Silver, Silvergate Bank, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, all of these different banks out there, the, the smaller ones, they have caused a lot of different problems. And it is the U.S. government what they have said that they are going to do is causing this rally. So they are injecting a bunch of money, billions of dollars into the overall banking system to prop up these banks. So they have set the standard. The standard now is no matter what banks do, no matter what they do, they are going to get bailed out from the U.S. government, which is a kind of dangerous uh, standard to set. But that is what the Fed has said. They are not going to let our economy die, or at least the banking side of the economy die, whether the banks are too big to bust or whether they are not too big to bust. And because of the money going back into the system, it's in a way very similar to the inflation that we saw before when uh, the coronavirus or COVID-19 stimulus checks were going out there and they were just just injecting money into the system, something very similar is happening. Right now, it's not in the trillions, but it's still in the high billions of dollars. So that is why the banking crisis volatility is pushing up the price of BTC. So that's the second story I want to talk about. The last thing has to do with Coinbase and the SEC. I do dig this. So Coinbase right now, they're pushing back to the SEC. They're saying, hey, there's just no correct way to register um, with the SEC right now. And that is the, their main thing. The SEC wants basically every single crypto except for Bitcoin to be underneath them. And it seems like Coinbase is on board with it to the to the most point, except to the fact that there is no way for them to correctly do it. Uh, as I say here, we've stayed away from it because there's no path to registration. There's just no way to do it. And it's kind of this weird battle that the SEC really wants it to happen, but they haven't provided a good path. They haven't provided any justification. They haven't provided that guidance that all these larger companies, they need to follow steps A through C in order to uh, register with the SEC. So that is why Coinbase is pushing back. And I hope other larger exchanges do that too until more guidance comes out. So that's the last thing I wanted to leave you with. This video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. But as you know, the overall crypto industry has been up and down. Right now, we see a lot of green across the board. If you are interested in what I am purchasing, when I purchase it, check out my Patreon link in the description below. If not, like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.